Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. It's Angela, the Traveling Crafter. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I invite you to subscribe and join in the fun. And if you are returning, a special welcome back to each and every one of you. And a shout out today to Gardens and Books, uh, Betty Metz, and Karen Bloom. Thanks for being here, I appreciate you very much. So what are we gonna do today? This is gonna be a fast video. But an important one if you have considered altering a book and have never tried it. Now, I do have a playlist where I altered. I actually think I have some videos on this too, but I don't remember what they are. If I can find them, I'll link them below. But <clears throat> I do have uh, altering a magazine into a memory book. So there is step-by-steps. But what I was working on. So this is the completed one. We're going to reference this in a minute. I recently did a haul and I had gotten this book and I was sitting here by myself watching some videos and I started altering this. And as I was doing so, I thought, you know, I think it would be, I had some revelations about this particular book, but I was bound and determined to use it. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But I was thinking about some of the things when I first started altering books that no one told me about. And I kind of wish I would have known. Uh, and I'm kind of one of those people that it's a throw out the concept and let me go at it. And I'm very kinesthetic. I like to try it and test it and kind of learn by my mistakes, which I have done plenty of times. So I thought I would hop on. I took some notes even and share with you just some top tips about altering a book. Now, this particular book is not going to be a altered book that will be painted in or anything. The pages are really slick. This is an altered book where it will be into, you know, transformed into a junk journal in some way, shape, or form, correct? So, what I want you to do before you do anything else is think about or pause me and go grab a book. Make it one, if you've never done this before, make it one you do not care about. Maybe you went to the dollar store and you grabbed a book. Um, maybe you have one in your stash that you just, you read, you didn't really like, grab that one. How many pages? Doesn't really matter. Um, this particular one, well, I guess I don't know how many pages it has, 384. Uh, if you wanted to do something small to start, that's fine. Uh, if you have something that's a larger book like this one, uh, just know it's going to take a little bit longer to pull out your pages and such. But grab a book you do not care about. If it gets messed up, it is no big deal. And by the way, it's not going to get messed up because there is a way that you can alter the altar if you will. Meaning, you're altering it, you goof it up, there's a solution. Always a solution. So, once you've got your book that you want to um, alter, and I will talk a little bit about my philosophy on what kind of books to use. I will also talk about what things maybe to consider. So, maybe you want to continue to watch for a moment before you grab that book. But, uh, putting this aside, we're going to talk about the tools that are essential for this project that I'm showing you. Uh, paper clips. You're going to want a lot of them. This is not nearly enough, but you need paper clips. I also get a few binder bulldog clips. Bulldog clips? What are these called? Binder clips. Bulldog clips are the other ones. Uh, I do always have like a pencil or a pen or something. Um, my handy dandy tough built scraper utility knife. I thought this was a De DeWalt. It's not. It's a tough built. It's on my Amazon favorite things. Best thing I've ever been gifted or confiscated from my husband. And I, I say that because you can tear the pages out. But I have found in my experience using a knife or an X-Acto or something like that works so much better. Um, but you do you and you decide what works best for you. I also would suggest having, oh, you could use a putty knife. You could use a bone folder. You could use a key card or in this, yeah, this is a key card from somewhere, some hotel. 
Uh, and that's really, you can also use um, a ruler too. It works equally as well. So once you have kind of, and glue. Now, uh, I have seen other people use Mod Podge or Gesso um, because they're changing the texture of their pages. You can do that as well if that's what you prefer. Gesso and uh, Mod Podge to me are just too messy. So I just use a glue stick. Uh, or if I think I need to re-secure something even better, I'll use our glitter glue. Actually, I'll use just whatever glue I've got. So once you've got those things in place, um, a few tips. Uh, I've also heard a lot of people say, use a, sew a book with sewn signatures in it. Meaning, oh gosh, sorry guys. The boys are watching football. Um, in my opinion, it doesn't matter. I've used both. Um, in fact, I've used a lot that are glued in, this one included. I was adamant that I wanted to use this as an ultra book because I adore the cover and the back cover. And so it was going to be what it was going to be, regardless of the type of pages that were inside, regard regardless of how it was bound. Um, and also, in my opinion, I have used signatures. Signatures are like, <laughs> do I have a, of course I'm thinking, do I have a book here handy? Well, this is probably not a very good example, but it is a signature. So a signature, if you can see at the top, the pages are larger and they're folded in half and they are, in this case, stapled. Some kind, Sometimes they are sewn in, sometimes they are bound with a book binding. And so a lot of people feel that it's easier for them to use the sewn signatures. For me, it is not. Uh, my risk here when I'm doing this and it is inside of the book is then tearing one of the you know, opposite pages and ruining the integrity of my altered book. So I like the glued ones, but like I said, you do whatever works for you. And I, in the case of this one, it didn't matter what kind of uh, bind book binding it had. It was going to get used. Um, hey, babe. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, my friends don't really need to hear a blow-by-blow blow of the um, your take on the game tonight. Um, but I didn't say that. Uh, sorry about that. So, uh, the weight of the paper does matter. Now, again, this was the book I wanted to use. Uh, I have already pulled out, before I decided to do a video, these pages. Not very many. I mean, I really haven't. But what I will say about these pages is, first of all, you can probably see the writing on the other side. This is heavier than, say, like a Bible page, but it's still, you can see, pretty thick, flimsy. You know, it's real flimsy. Uh, this would not be ideal if I was doing my first altered book. But again, I wanted to use it. So something with pages that are a little bit heavier. Um, Reader's Digest, perfect first book to alter. In fact, that might have been the first book that I ever altered. I don't remember, but I know I've altered them. Very easy, small, you know, they're very adaptable. Um, so consider that. So that's a couple of tips about your book and the weight of the paper. Um, and then I will also tell you uh, my next tip, and I say it all the time, but the rules are there are no rules. You know this is going to drive me crazy till I get this off here. Uh, and I truly believe that in any type of art that you do in art, there really is no rules that, I mean, rules are meant to be broken in creativity. And just because one person says this is the way to do it doesn't mean that's the gospel of junk journaling. Uh, you may have a great idea that nobody else has ever thought of. And if it works for you, then do it and... I would love to hear what those are too, because I'm always willing to learn more. So take a deep breath, grab that book you don't really care about, and just do it. Now, 
You got all that. I've given you your pep talk. Uh, remember, as you get started, you can always alter the altar, right? And then experiment with things. So what I would tell you as far as um, starting off, when you're taking your book apart, this is Angela's process. I'm not saying it's the exact right way, but it's what I do. These are called fly pages. They're the pages that are connected to the book before the innards are actually bound. You usually have one in the front and you usually have one in the back. What I generally will do is always keep this fly page if I can. And then I do, I do a fly plus five. And I just pick five pages or take the first five pages. I do nothing with them. I don't decide they're going to be a pocket. I don't decide that I'm going to anything. I just get to those five pages. I take my clip and I put them together and I say, we'll talk to you later about this. I do the very same thing in the back. Take the first five or so pages, clip them together. <clears throat> End of story. We leave them like they are. Now, I haven't put a clip on these because um, I was working in this. And so I was smoothing the pages. I got something in my eye, darn it. And uh, I didn't want that bulk on there, but um, you certainly can. Okay. So that brings me to the fact that it, if for me, it is easier if I work from alternating. Um, maybe a few, well, as you can see here, I've done this many in the front and then I went to the back and I have just started working on these signatures in the back or these pages in the back. And then after I get, you know, a couple more done, then I'll move back to the front and so on and so forth. It just works for me. It makes sure it makes me, <clears throat> it makes it easier for me to kind of look and see how are things going? Am I compromising anything with the integrity of the spine? How many pages do I have left? I'm just asking those questions to myself as I'm going. And it just helps my process. It just, it works for me. Um, it also helps me in kind of balancing um, how that book is um, coming together so that it's not, you know, a gator mouth. Now, I the one I'm going to show you for my examples, it was a huge, the one that I showed you a little bit earlier, it's a gator mouth. But it's mine, and I'm okay with that. The other thing I will tell you is as you're constructing or designing your page layouts, work in the portrait as the book lays. Um, you know, <laughs> work just as the book is laid out. However, when you start to um, glue pages, cut pages, take pages out, I always move things to the side, okay? And I'll show you one of these in just a second. So we'll just do, we'll just do one. So let's move to the back of the book because that's where I was at. Now let me see what I have here. Uh, the other thing I don't think I told you that you want to have a lot of uh, is little post-it notes or things to make your your notes because if you use my process, I do all of my design, I use all my paper clips, and then I come back and then I start assembling them, adhering if I'm going to be using additional papers and things like that, then I will do that at that point. So I don't want to forget what my idea was if I had something, a unique idea, and I've got all these pages together and I'm like, what in the heck was I going to do? So that is why I use these notes. And you can see, I think I have a couple up here. Yeah, this is going to be a top pocket. I want to split these pockets. Um, you know, just things like, things like that. So let's see. Um, this one. Okay, here's a, yes. So what I had done is this was the page. And if you have bulkier, heavier papers, you may want to cut part of this off. But because these are so thin, I'm keeping all of this in there just to give it a little extra oomph. But I had this paper just laid over and then I cut out 10, uh, six to 10 pages. I don't remember how many. And you can see 
that a couple of these did not get cut perfectly with my knife. So when you were taking out those middle pages, remember you had that remember to have something on this side that you're going to kind of attach it to and hide or re-secure those pages that you've cut out, okay? So now let's just do a simple, what else did I do? Okay, we have a tuxedo shirt pocket. We have these double ones. I just want to see what I've done back here and a double one here. Huh, okay. Well, I want to keep a couple pages just plain. Like I want to keep them and probably two pages and use them as they are. So again, I'm going to clip these together. I'm going to take my post-it and I'm going to put a note here that says, keep a single pages. Okay, those are good. All right, let's see. So we're going to keep those the same. And let's just say, I feel like I'm going to need, we're just going to do a single, have I done that yet? No, we'll do this. Boy, my memory doesn't go very far. Okay, have we done that? Let's see what we did in the front. We can replicate something we've done back here. I wanted to show you something easy. I mean, not that any of them are difficult, but. Well, here's what we can do. We can make this a um, top, top pocket. Because these are thin, I think I'm going to glue these together. So I'm gonna, going to go ahead. And, and this is going to be another tip here in a second. Now, it's going to be a little bit harder because this is... I should probably undo this. Let me just undo this so it lays a little flatter. Which is going to be... An, it, it's going to be important when I... So all I'm going to do is glue these two together. Why? Because my paper's thin. If you have better paper in your book you will not have to worry about that at all, but I do because apparently I'm stubborn and I want to use this book. All right, so I'm just going to get it nice and glued down. Again, you use your... Now watch what I'm doing. Okay, this is the piece I'm gluing to this. You'll see that it will kind of curl. So take your, take your book on its side and hold that down. I go with my bone folder because I can really get a lot of movement and then I close my book like that. Now, these are now together and when I put this together with these next two pages that I will glue, I'll have a nice sturdy I think I'm going to do a side pocket. That's what I'll do on this. And I'll write that in just a minute. Now, I could go ahead and make a, a thumb notch. But because I'm probably going to cover some of these with paper, I don't want to do the thumb notch yet. So I'm just going to say, there we go. And I'm going to show you with the, these are just really simple. So here are my two glued pages. I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to pull it without ripping it. You don't need to get heavy handed with it. Pull this as far out. That, that way you know that it's just going to lay as flat as possible and close it. It's why it works for me to work on the side. Okay, I'm done. Now I have these two ready to go. I'm going to clip them together. I'm going to put this on the side and then right side pocket. Now at this point, we are ready to pull out some pages. So back to what I was ready to share with you. Um, we're going to sandwich all of the pieces. So I'm going to keep this single page right here. Oh, dog nuts. 
I'm going to, well, we're just going to cut this one out. So I'm going to count. We're going to keep just this one here by itself. One, two, three, four, five. Let's just take six out for the sake of this video. Now I have, I goofed actually. I really wanted to keep this. Common causes of cake failures. And I made a mistake. So there are several pages that are glued together. I'm going to stick those down in here because I'm using my knife. And then I'm going to take this like this. I'm just going to hold that down and I am going to cut. This one I might have to because it's... Be careful you don't cut yourself. And go slow. Especially with, and see how nice that comes out, and then save your pages. And you can usually get a couple pages out of there before you have to cut again. Well, maybe not. But it just makes it nice and clean, if you will. And then you just keep on going. Save your pages. We'll use them for something. I don't know what. How are we doing? We're doing great. Okay, that one needs to be cut. As close as you can without... Don't cut this way because you will cut that other page. So cut away from the page that you're saving. And you should be golden. What if you cut too many pages? Not to worry. Just, just use the next one. There we go. Perfect. Look how beautiful that is. Awesome. Now I have this, this page. Let's see. Let's do one that we can, um, let's find an example in here. Cause I have some examples that I wanted to use. See, see these little things. That's, those are the ones that I want to replicate. So let's see what we got here. And look how fat this thing is. That's fat. And look, this was glued in. It's fine. Everything is fine. Again, if I were selling it, would I do it differently? Probably. Oh, we can do this one. This is perfect. All right. So we're going to make this page right here. So what we are going to do, <clears throat> we're going to first glue these two together. Now, normally, if you had thicker pages, you wouldn't have to. You could just fold this down. Well, could we? I think because maybe be, if we have, yeah, I think if we're doubling that one up and we're doubling the other one, we should be okay. So all you're going to do is fold it in like I just did. Perfect, right? Now, all you're going to do is pull this page basically over the top approximately and we're going to tuck it in there, make sure it's even. It is. I think we'll be okay with it like this. Now, if I were ready, I would uh, glue this down and this down under here and then glue it together. I'm not ready yet because I need to add pretties to it. So I just put those two together. All of those pages that I had pulled out are hidden between these two pages. And that's all there is to it. And we continue. Um, you know, you get a few and then you move back to the front. And that's all there is to it. Looking to see if I'm forgetting anything. I'm not. So the last thing, the most important thing is to have fun. Now, if you want to see, I have some more complex pages that I have uh, marked in the other journal that I have finished that I'm going to do in here. And if you are interested in seeing that, um, let me know because I can add them in here and we can do another quick video. Um, but I hope that that helps. Again, I'll go over. Um, real quickly, just, you know your supplies, you can rewind if you need to, but uh, take a deep breath, use an old book. Give it a try. Consider your fly plus five. 
work from the front and then the back, alternating. Work on the side when you're cutting and you're gluing and pull towards you. Use your bone folder or some other apparatus to do that and always close your book down when you're doing each page. Between every single um, design that you do, um, do that. Glue or sandwich your, your cut out pages or your pulled pages in between two structurally sound pieces. We just did that right before. And then last but not least, have a little fun. So I hope this was helpful and I hope that you will give it a try. If you want to see step by step what I did in the uh, Altered Magazine Memory Journal, then hop on over to that playlist and check it out. Um, until next time, friends, remember to take time to just be. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I invite you to join along and um, get ready for some fun. We'll see you next time. Cheers.